there's no name greater than the name of Jesus. And there is no greater thing that you can do sometimes in your situations than to call on the name of Jesus. So all across the building, everybody's going to say, Jesus!
done. Thank you. Now, as I ask all the time, as a praise and worship, now don't that just feel a little bit better? Don't y'all feel just a little more free? Yeah. Don't y'all feel like a little bit of a word that's been lifted off you? Thank you. Praise God for that opportunity. And as we said, we all have a schedule. We know there are things that we have to get to, but at the same time, you never know when you're going to get another opportunity. Right. Thank you. Thank you. you never know when you're going to get another opportunity. Thank you. Feel free. Yes. Yes. In the house of the Lord. Yes. About one to just Thank you, Lord. And also keep in mind. Go <laughs> start preaching. Lord. I ain't never heard of so preaching. <laughs> so you know the spirit of God is moving. Lord. So shy. So you know when you start saying something, something needs to be said. Just thank God for everything that He's done. At this time, we're going to move the next of our service on. So our elder Charles will be going to the next portion of our service. Let's receive him by saying Amen. Amen.
I want you to recognize yes. because of the scripture. The Bible says that God called Abraham a friend. Right? You've got to understand the context of the scripture. Don't understand the context of the song. Unless the song is in line with the context of the scripture. But the Bible says, amen, that God called Abraham a friend because he was righteous. Yes. Let me say that one more again. Because some of y'all missed that one. The Bible said that God called Abraham a friend because he was righteous. What made him righteous? He wasn't righteous because of what he did. He was righteous because of his faith. Yes. But here's the thing. Hallelujah. Amen. See, I want you to sing, I am a friend of God with true conviction because you are righteous. But you can't be righteous without having faith. Righteous is not solely an act, amen, but your act, amen, evolves, amen, from your faith in God. You'll catch that when you get home. Let me just bring it down to the limit. Sir. He called him a friend because of his lifestyle. Because he was godly. Because he was holy. Thank you. I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. Yes. Thank you. Lord. I can say that because I know the meaning of it. Amen. Because of my faith. Righteousness and holiness and godliness isn't something that you do. It is something that you are that stems from your faith in God. But your faith in God can only come when you have an intimate relationship. When you get to know him. Being here on a Sunday morning, amen, doesn't make you say more than a, a parked car in the garage. You standing in the garage make you a car. <laughs> What am I saying? Everybody that goes, I heard this and this is pretty funny. Everybody that goes to Walmart ain't Walton. Everybody that goes to church ain't Zay. But it's the place to be. Because this is the only place, praise God, that we can experience and better receive Jesus Christ by faith. Thank you. And it is that faith that God recognized in Abraham that he called him righteous. Why is that? Because your faith in God, amen, moves on and it graduates, amen, to you living a life that is in line with the word of God. Let me help you out. You can't say that you have faith in God, but you live contrary to God's word. Because that isn't faith. That's wishful faith. Because we look at faith, and the Bible says it's in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1, that now faith is the substance of faith hoped for. We hope for it, but that hope isn't wishful thinking. That hope deals with future. Yes. Something that I don't see. You may not see yourself living a righteous and a godly life, but you got to look at it through the eyes of faith that one day if you keep on keeping on, you'll get there. See, we've got to understand, amen, the songs that we sing. What is this, choir 101? Yeah. See, because you can sing a line just as much as you can tell a lie. Thank you. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. I, I know it's convenient, but I'm telling you something. Amen. If we can, if we can understand, amen, and recognize the power in the blood yeah. that He's able to transform and change us, amen, into something, amen, that He wants. Hallelujah. Glory. How many is a friend of God? I am. I am. How many times they will be? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. But here's the thing: don't let nobody tell you because you mess up. As long as you keep trying. See, some folks say you don't give up. You don't mess up. Go ahead and 
Sit down, praise team. Hey, boy, I'll tell you what, look at this young man. Everybody sit down and sit with this brother right here. It's something when you got a preacher that can praise, huh? Uh oh. He was what he preaching. He was my father to start preaching. That vacation do to you. I love this young man. Yeah. You know, folks say you gotta be. You know why is that? Most of the time, that folk want to experience God because they didn't live a wrecked up life, been in the hood. Yeah. I use this young man as a testimony all the time. Grown, lived in the hood, Hunters Point, over there, and never was touched by that street life. Lord, yeah. Thank you. Bless God. Thank you, Lord. You know, because there's a concept, amen, out there that people think, well, you know, only bad people, you know, give their life and, you know, go to God and God save them because of what they went through. You know, I don't know anybody that was a square. Anybody that was straight in the arrow, praise God, and did, did nothing wrong, they were just good, you know, and gave their life. Young man right here. Yes. It was a straight square, wasn't you? Yes. <laughs> I don't mean that in the back. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He's a testimony. Yes. A man that was good. Didn't get in no trouble. But yet he knew it that he needed the Lord in his life. Yes. Yes. Lord, sit down, brother. Thank you. Boy, I tell you, God is doing amazing things, and I'm just so glad. I'm grateful. Amen. To be saved. I'm glad. Listen, if you if you're not happy that you say, praise God, you better think twice about this night. Hey, so you're not going to be a good Christian. <laughs> Listen, we got enough bad ones out there. We don't need no more bad ones. We need some good solid ones. Solid as a rock. Somebody that's living this thing. Huh? Don't come to church on Sunday and then, you know, Monday morning, I mean, they just a dog cat. You just transform into something, amen, that God ain't called you to be. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. We got to be real, and you got to be real about your salvation. Yes. Yes. You can listen to God that I serve. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Yes. Man, I don't care. Look, what you see is what you get. I, man, you see me out in the street, I'm still saved. Yes. Thank you. Praise God, amen, because God's been too good. Listen, life is too short yes. Yes. for me to try to fool you. God is such a loving God. He's, oh man, I mean, God is just so, I'm enjoying my walk with God. Yes, yes. Man, thank you. Let me put this out there. Not everything in my life is going well. I mean, it is well, but you know, we still go through our valleys and we still go through our storms. But amen, I'm not going to allow those things to dictate to me, amen, my walk with yeah. God. Yeah. You ought not to allow any circumstances that comes in your life to dictate to you. Amen. How you respond, amen, to God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, God. I just want to recognize all of our visitors and our guests. Amen. This morning. Mon Monita Johnson. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to mess this name up. I'm just going to say the last name. Griffin. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming out. Amen. Chief of the all the way from the Leo. Sierra Smith, God bless you wherever you are. Thank you for coming out this morning. Emma Gray, amen. God bless you, Emma. We thank you for coming. Uh, Titus, amen. God bless you, Titus. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Y'all could have been anywhere this morning, but we just so much appreciate it. You all coming out. Shauna Johnson. Amen. Thank you. Shauna Johnson. Amen. God bless you. And Kaylola. Kaylola Johnson. God bless you as well. Thank you. Uh, Catlin Hood. God, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming out. And, and that's your, your brother next to you. All right. He didn't he did put his name on the 
talk but that's all right. I didn't do you a little bit. That's all right, little brother. We love you. Amen. God bless you. And we also like to welcome um, Laura's dad. Yes. Amen. And his family, Mo. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming out. Amen. Being with us on, on this morning. Amen. So good to see the people of God here this morning. Amen. Um, God is good, isn't he? Yes. Amen. Praise God. I'm, I'm so excited about what God is doing. Amen. In our midst. I don't care what the world says. Oh, yes. I don't care what people say. Yes. Amen. About my God. About our lifestyle. Amen. Praise God. I'd rather suffer now Amen. and be talked about now and enjoy peace. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 In eternity with God. Yes. yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 In the last days. And you've got to recognize that. We're living in the very last days. Yes. And, and you got to recognize that. Let me say this. Don't live your life so that you can be validated by everybody. Yes. Amen. You will, you will be very, very, not only disappointed, but you're probably very, very unhappy. Yes. If you live your life Amen. Always looking for somebody to validate you. Thank you. What are you talking about, Pastor? Some of y'all have a falling out with somebody on Facebook because they didn't comment on what you said. Ah, <laughs> uh, I knew I would hit the nerve. You understand, right? Don't seek attention. Don't seek, amen, validation. Don't try to find your identity within social media. Yes. This is the only thing right here that you and I will ever discover. Yes. Our identity. Amen. Thank you. Who are you talking about? Some of us get a little bent out of shape if somebody comments something that doesn't fit right with us. We're so used to being validated. Don't you know that that's a system, amen, that the world has kind of created? Amen. To get us to move away, praise God, from being validated by God. Think about that just for a minute. Ponder about that. It's the whole reason and the purpose why Jesus Christ came to die for you and I is He came to validate you and I. As a matter of fact, the Bible doesn't even call it validation, He calls it justification. He justifies us. Not only does he justify us, but he sanctifies us. He cleanses us. Praise God. And he gives us our identity. He gives to you and I, amen, the real you and I. Who we really are in Christ. Praise God. And that brings me comfort because I'm comfortable in this skin. I guess somebody's got to hear this. Amen. Because God cares for you that much. Amen. Because he's created you. The Bible says that God has created man in his what? Image. And what else? His own likeness. When God made you and I, praise God, he really made you and I for you and I to be comfortable with who we are. But because the influences of the world, our family, and society. Praise God, we have picked up a whole new identity that doesn't really belong to us. Amen. Yes. Truth be told, we are guilty for identity theft. Yes. Yes. We have an ID card, amen, with our picture on it, but our name is not correct, neither is our address. Neither is your date of birth. And we've been scooting by this world using the, this ID card, amen, that really doesn't belong to us. That's why when one gives themselves to God, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17, amen, behold, if any man is in Christ, he becomes a what? New creature. What does he, what does he mean that he gives you? 
Does he make you new? He gives you, he, he makes you absolutely new, but he gives you your original identity, amen, from way back when, when he created, amen, Adam and Eve. And he allows you, amen, once you get saved, all those of you, amen, that are in Christ, amen, and that you're giving your life over to the Lord, praise God. How many of you are comfortable with who you are? Amen. Amen. You've gone over. Listen, I used to, praise God, wonder and think about what people thought about me out there in the world. I had an image that I had to protect, and that image, amen, was a false image. Yes. I was trying to put up here, let me talk, let me come down to your level. I was trying to put up a front. Amen. I was trying to be something that I wasn't. But until I came to Christ, amen, he gave me my, my identity. I became comfortable with who I am because I knew, know that it was God that created me. But I know that, praise God, when I discovered myself, who I was in Christ, Christ begins then to what? Process, takes me through this process, amen, and makes and molds me to who he wants me to be. And therefore, I get rid of the false identity and I take on the identity of Christ. The Bible says, amen, that if any man that is in Christ Jesus, he becomes a what? A new creature. Behold, old things have died. They have passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Why? Because God has given you, praise God, a new identity, a, your original identity. Amen. Because that's what the church is really all about. God is trying to take us back to the original design. Everybody say original design. Original design. The original design that God created for me and you. And he created me and you for his glory and for his pleasure. That's why we praise God, amen, the way that we do. Because God has created me to praise him. Praises in everybody. Yes. That's why we worship and we idol certain individuals. That's a form of praise and worship. That's why God said, amen, one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not have no what? Other gods before me. God knew that we were going to bend down and bow down to other gods. That's why when we come here on the Lord's side, amen, yes. and God, his precious blood, yes. his broken body that he's given to you and I, we praise God with all our might. That's what David said, amen, in the Psalms, amen, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, oh, bless yes. his name. Yes. Thank you. How many of you felt the power of God when we was praising him? Yes. I felt the power of God. Amen. say all, but some of your problems you did. <laughs> some of my problems I did. Thank you, Lord. But you keep on praising God, and then God has created us, amen, for his glory and for his pleasure. And I love praising God, don't you? Yes, I want to go some more. I'm trying to be good. Y'all need an instrument alone. I'm just saying, y'all help me out. We got communion. We got a baby dedication. We're we going to commune with God. Remember, amen, what he has done for us. We're going to dedicate a baby to the Lord. Then I got to go, amen, to a funeral. The only thing that's missing today is somebody's wedding. Who won't get married? Who won't mind well the whole kingdom? Come on now. Anybody giving birth right now? <laughs> this is the line, praise God. Listen, everything about our life, amen, God is in the middle of the equation without Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus did this in the book of John. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I got to apologize. Our computer didn't, didn't went out on us, and we didn't have a word to the song, but good God Almighty, the power of God was still here. Yeah. You know, sometimes we just got to go, you know, without any words. You know, that's how we used to do back in the old days. He didn't have no music, he didn't have no words. You know, we didn't get so caught up in all this stuff. This stuff is good, it helped it a little bit, but they, they, let's not get so dependent upon it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I was looking at the praise team and they didn't, they was lost. I was lost. I'm looking at the praise team. You know, it's a bad thing when you're looking for somebody, amen, to help you and to guide you and they don't know where they're going. <laughs> But all the messed up my praise. Uh, That's why your preacher and your pastor better 
know where he's going. Everybody, I'm telling you, I was looking at my dog sitting down. I was looking at her and she was just, you know what I mean? Remember that?
whether we know it or not. Let me bring it home. Dad and mom be beating us up. I'm, I'm doing this because I love it. <laughs> well, that's some weird kind of love, Dad. You just knocked my tooth out. I'm saying they love you, love you. <laughs> now, those of you that have parents, how many of you doing the same thing? Because you know that. And when you know that, you do that. God deals with us the same way. It's a relationship, amen, that God is calling for. And God has provided that relationship, amen, by what you see that is represented here today. Is that we come, amen, to commune with God and to remember the things that Jesus Christ went through for you and me. Everything that happens to us is to get us closer to Christ. Even the good stuff. Even the blessings of God. Never get so caught up in the blessings of God that you forget the lessons and the process on how you got there. What are you talking about? God took the children of Israel, brought them out of Egypt, brought them out of the world, came to the sea, the Red Sea. Mountains surrounded them, nowhere to go. God calls the Red Sea to be divided, and the Bible says that they walked across on dry land. Pharaoh and his army is quickly approaching them. God waits until Pharaoh and his army gets into that water. They get on the other side of the sea. And God closes this big body of water on them. They saw the very act and the very power of God in their life, bringing them out of the world, which have significant ties to our salvation. Coming out of the world, God commands us to be baptized. Pharaoh and his army is a representation of sin. That water was a representation of water baptism. That sin doesn't go no further than that water. How do we know that? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and at verse number 1, the Bible tells us that. That they were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were baptized unto Moses. They got over on the other side. God closes the water on them. They rejoice. They receive the blessings of God, the power of God. They see the hand of God. And quickly they come to a place, amen, in the Bible, Exodus chapter 15, a place that is called Marah, which means bitter. They were thirsty, and quickly they forget the very act and the power of God. And say, Moses, we thirsty. Wasn't there graves on the other side or in Egypt? We could have died over there. God tells Moses to grab a tree, throw it in there, causes the water to become sweet. So quickly that they forget how powerful God is. They forget the lesson. I want to submit that same thing to you and I, that when God delivers us, don't forget that that same power that delivers you is the same power that can keep you and deliver you from any other trouble that you will ever face in your life. That's why the power and the blood of Jesus Christ is so significant, even still today. As we were preparing this week and just meditating upon the word of God, Amen. And thinking about the goodness of God and the things that he has done for us. Turn with me real quickly to the book of John chapter 19. <clears throat> Just want to highlight some things here. I know oftentimes 
some question. Why is it that we don't do communion every month? And I have no problem of answering that. Not here, but you know, I've heard it being asked. And, and maybe it has questioning cost your mind. But it is just something to me. I mean, number one, the Bible doesn't really say to have it in 30 days. But I don't want the Lord's death and what he has done for us to become a ritual that we forget and lose its significance. Thank you. Yes. Neither do I want it so far apart that we also lose its significance. So we try to do it at least once a quarter or every other month or however that the Lord will move upon us. Amen. To have communion, and it doesn't even have to be the first. The last time we did our communion, I believe it was in September. It was the second Sunday in September. Whether you want to do it on a monthly basis, it's totally up to you. But I just want for us to keep and to remember the significance of what God has done for us. And never lose a man sight of that. Never lose a man sight of his precious blood. As, as I was reading, just seeking the mind of God, uh, times I just had to just put down the word. And it was a great reminder for me. Because sometimes we get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life. And we get caught up in the blessings of God. And oftentimes we don't remember. But we tend to forget, not that we do it, purposely, but you understand what I'm saying. Sometimes we forget what he did for us. I hear, and I'm also guilty of it myself, man, God did this for me. He opened up a door for me. in reference of us receiving the blessings of God. And I'm not discounting that. Understand the spirit in which I am saying this. And I put myself in the same category. And God blessed me with this. God gave me favor. God did this. He did that. I mean, we talk about the things that God did. And yes, they're significant, and yes, they are important. But I don't hear anymore that God died for me. I don't hear anymore about the crown of thorns that he wore. And us receiving the blessings of God. You understand what I'm saying? And as I was reading, I was, I was just reminded. And it is a wonder why God, in 1 Corinthians, beginning at chapter 11, around verse number 24. As a matter of fact, let's go there real quick. The things that God has done for us, and then we'll come back to John chapter 19. If Elder, if you can get that for me and read this for me real quickly. Around verse number 22, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 22, around there somewhere, and read down. That we have to be reminded of what Christ has done for us so that we can really appreciate what he has done for us. 
Meaning what he has done for us and that he, he died for us and he shed his precious blood. And the second what he has done for us in that he has blessed us. Because the second blessing, praise God, amen, can't overshadow of what he originally did for you and me. And it's just a great reminder. And I'm just so blessed today just, just to be, be, be saved. <clears throat> and to know that the precious blood of Jesus Christ has washed away all of us. And just to know that he died for me. And that he bore a cross for me. And that he received 39 stripes on his back for me. Oh, sinner like me, wretched, broken, undone, me. But he had the blood of Jesus Christ in his body. And the thing that he went through for me, understand this. We even work and we operate even on a natural level, amen, with our relationship with people that we would go the distance with someone that had bent over backwards and taken their shirt off their back so that I can have something to wear, something to eat, something to drive in and some. You know what I'm saying? We will go the distance and we will never forget what certain individuals have done for us. How can me, little old me, nothing went and undone, forget what Jesus Christ has done for me, which is way more significant than my wife will ever do for me, than my children will ever do for me. The blood of Jesus Christ, the thing that he has done, he has given me hope. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Some people are lost today in the world, amen, without no hope, but I thank God the blood of Jesus Christ has given me a future. He has given me hope. He has given me a plan and an expected end. Thank the Lord. This week was just such a blessing. Just to be able to sit down, praise God, and meditate and think about what, I mean, sometimes we get so wrapped up and we want to get so deep in God. Amen. And forget about how deep God's love is for you and me. We want to get deep in the scripture. We want to revelation after revelation. I want to be able to quote the whole Bible but can't live nothing. And forget about, amen, what, what, what is important and in what God has done for me. Let the glory, praise God, robe himself in flesh, step down for the two generations, walked among men, be praise God, and died on Calvary's hill for me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Talking about the blood of Jesus Christ, that, that what he did for me. And that's what he's done for you. That's why I'm saved. That's why I live the way that I live. That's why I praise the way that I pray. And I owe my life. I can't praise God enough. I can't give God enough. I can't. There's not enough that I can do to ever pay off my debt to God. I'm forever, forever be in debt to me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. There's nothing that anybody the face of this earth. You ain't good enough. It is only through faith and by faith. Amen. That I'm righteous. Amen. It's not what that I say. It's not what I do that makes me righteous. Amen. It's my faith that makes me righteous. It's my faith that called me to live right. It's my faith that called me to talk right. It's my faith. When I think, perhaps the old saints will say, if I, when I think of the goodness of Jesus yes, and all that He's done for me, Thank you. my soul cries out. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I praise God for saving me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. All that he's done. What are you talking about? I'm not talking about what he did for my parents. I'm not talking about what he did for my children. I'm not talking about what he did for me. I'm not talking about the blessing, but I'm talking about the blood and the power. Yes. Thank you. We get so caught up in the blessings. 
that we lose the significance of the blood that we buy. Right? Put the emphasis on the blood in the body and watch your life just transform. Okay. So what does it say there? What? <laughs> Do you not have houses to eat? Don't you have houses to eat? And drink in? Uh-huh. Despise you in the church of God? Shame yes. you have not? Uh -huh. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise right. God. For I received of the Lord that which also I also have. Listen, he received this from God. That the Lord Jesus, the same night. And the Apostle Paul was given this to the church at Corinth. But he was because they were prayer. dishonoring the supper of the Lord. They were calling a man to get filled. Naturally. And we're losing out on the importance and the significance of the spiritual application, amen, of why they're coming together. All right. When he had given thanks, he broke it. Uh huh. And said, Take ye, this is my body. This is it. I'll take the for you. This Broke. is the remembrance of it. Yeah. After the same man. After the same man. Also, he took the cup. Uh huh. When he had sucked, saying, The blood. This cup uh -huh. is the New Testament. Yes, the New Testament. In my blood. Of his blood. Do this do ye as often as you do it. He says, Do this as often as you do it. Why? Wow. Remember to me. Thank you. In the remembrance of him for what he has done. Here's a kicker. <coughs> Christ is not for me now that I'm saved. He died for me when I was in my uncircumcised yeah. state. When I was not saved. This whole church thing and this whole God thing. Amen. Jesus Christ said, I came, amen, to seek and to save Thank you, Lord. that which was lost. Yeah. That's why he died for us. Amen. It's to bring him into it, to bring us into his kingdom. Amen. I'm so glad. You know, that's why I really thank God for the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the living God. Because he's a teacher. And he leads and he guides to all truth. And I just want to remind us, amen, as God will have us, to never forget. You may be struggling through some situations in your life, I'm telling you the blood. You may be an addict, but I'm telling you, the blood. Some of you may think that you can never be accepted by God because of the lifestyle. It is our very lifestyle that was contrary to God's word for the blood. It was because of sin that we had to have a blood sacrifice, which was an atonement for our sin. You know, I just really want to just get into this line. I hope the Lord is touching my heart. last night, God can't accept you. He will. He don't accept what we do. He'll accept you. And all of your problems, God will help you to work it out. Hey, that's a lie. Listen, I didn't quit and stop sinning like that. Amen. It was a process. to 
go to the blue. I remember what Jesus Christ did. Go, go, let's say John real quick. Y'all go over
The only reason why Pilate did this was because the Jews didn't let up. All this Jesus went through, what we're, all, what we're about to read, he went through this for you and I. One of the scriptures says, amen, that he went through all this without a cause. You got to forgive me or to bear with me. Because I can't really take my mind off of what Christ did for me. And thinking about this and trying to deliver this, amen, it's a very, very tough task. Because I want you to understand the importance of this. The reason why we do what we do. And if you can grasp this, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, if you're thinking about a relationship with Christ, if you can just grasp what he has done for you, I'm telling you, your life will be blessed. Understanding the power, amen, that is in the blood and the power that Jesus finds, the things that he has done for us, amen, it, 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 I can't articulate it. It is something that you have to experience for yourself. All we can do is preach it and proclaim it, but it is up to you to grasp it and to believe it. That he did this and that he went the distance for me. Why do you act crazy, amen, for this whole Jesus thing? Because he went crazy for me. Thank you. Thank you. If this is not crazy love, what he did for me, I don't know what crazy love is. Thank you. That he would do this for me. Listen to that verse number one. That father therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the, what a scourge me. I wish we had this up on the screen. What a scourge me. They whipped him. Now, according to history, man, that whip, praise God, was made of leather. At the end of that whip, it had some type of ball with fish hooks. So every time they struck him or they scorched him or they whipped him, that bone, praise God, with that hook would grab his flesh and tear it apart. Sometimes these things have to be played out. A drama, if you will. So that we can really understand the things that Jesus Christ went through for you and me. That he shed his blood before he shed his blood. Thank you, Lord. Can you imagine that being whipped 39 times? Five times is it bad. 39 times is, is, is that not enough? The thing that he went through for me and you. And yet because we were living in a sinful state, because we weren't right, he wanted a man a life that was wrong to be right. By him sacrificing himself, he took a man my place. He became my ransom. He traded places with me, praise God, because his love runs so deep. He didn't want you and I to go through what he went through, amen. Thank you. Because we were a sacrifice that was blemished. Yeah. Praise God. Our blood, praise God, was yeah. taken to strength. Thank God himself has Thank anointed you. himself to sweat. Come down, amen, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, amen. Thank a perfect you. sacrifice for you and me to be in atonement, amen, for our sin. That's why they sacrificed animals in the Old Testament time, amen. And when they sacrificed something, amen, it had to be without blemish. It had to be a perfect sacrifice. That animal, amen, praise God, the blood of the animal. But here's the thing, though. Even though they sacrificed that sacrifice, amen, only atoned for their sin just for one year. All they did was just push it back. All they did was just kept pushing it back. Year after year, it kept pushing it back. Year, it didn't get rid of it. It was still there. It just kept pushing it back. He just kept pushing it back. But when Jesus Christ showed on the scene, he did not push it back. He got rid of that thing. Why, when you talk about the blood, I can't do nothing but just get all excited. Thank you. Forget about the blessing. Give me the blood. Forget about the house. Give me the blood. Forget about the car. Give me the blood. Hey, boy. Thank you, Jesus. Getting the cleaning of it here. Tell you, I can't, I can't show up when you talk about the blood. The significance of that and the importance of it. Thank you, Lord. What he did. Come on, man. Think about this thing. You know you. I know me. Amen. I was a bad dude. Amen. I, I just would. I hated me. Yes. I couldn't stand myself. And yet Jesus Christ yes. Yes. Thank you. was scorched for me. Yes. Oh, 
posting it up. Pray, look, I'm getting ugly now. I'm going to tell y'all the truth because I'm going to expose it. Yes. We got all yes. Oh, we got all of this Halloween candy back. We giving away a thousand on Easter. We giving away a ten thousand eggs. What did it cost you? It didn't cost you a dime.
But I'm just one incident away from losing my mind. Yes. I'm just a, listen, I'm just one accident away. Yes. You're just one accident away. Right. I'm not proclaiming and claiming anything. I'm just saying that help us to realize yes. that some people, amen, got where they are because something just happened. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And they important what Jesus Christ did. Mm -hmm. All the homelessness, folks on drugs, those are the very ones that Jesus Christ came from. Yes. Yes. Let, me continue on. Let me finish with this. Verse number two of the soldiers played with a crown of thorns, put it on his head. Thorn, crown on his head, they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail to the Jews, and they slapped him, spoke him, which is what they <laughs> This is what they did to Jesus, and this is what Jesus did for us. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns of purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. Behold the man. All the things that he went through. And he wants us to never forget. He didn't die for the righteous. I've already claimed and made him the Lord of my life. Yeah. You may not have a relationship with him. You may be here and not see. You may even think in your mind that you're just a bad person and that there's no hope for you. What we're preaching about is for you. Yeah. You're going to say, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm taking care of my kids. I'm taking care of the home. I'm, I'm okay. I'm sure. Still need Jesus Christ in my life. He did it for all. And I'm so glad that he did. Please, don't forget. you won't change overnight. It can happen. But it's a start. 
Thank you, Lord. It's a start. And you know what? Everybody has to start somewhere. Even after you've given your life to Christ, you're still going to make some mistakes. Truth be told. Yes. Even saved folks still yes. make some mistakes. Yes. That's why the blood is so powerful. Because he still cleanses, washes, and makes us clean and wider the snow. If I'm speaking to you, if God is speaking to you, I'm right now. Amen. Please come forward. In the name of Jesus, if you want somebody to accompany you down so that you would feel comfortable, please come. Tomorrow is not promised. Today is. Think about the blood of Jesus Christ and the things that he has done for you and me. He didn't die. He didn't do that for those who were righteous. He did it for those that were unrighteous. God can set you free. He back from the bondage of sin. If you want the Lord today, if you want to be saved, please come. Maybe you desire the Lord.
partaking of the communion today.
for you. Let us receive it. Amen. The body of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
And you know the old saying goes, it takes a village to do what? To raise a child. And where these two fall short, amen, God wants you all to pick up the pieces and strengthen them. Thank you. We don't want you to be Naomi's mom and dad. And Naomi got mom and dad. Yes. <laughs> they need your support. Yeah. Thank you. Spiritually and naturally so. For her sake. Understand that she didn't ask to be here. But if we are a people of faith, amen. Let's hold, amen. Let's give God that. Amen. To make sure that this young child, amen, has the best care spiritually. Thank you. And that she is brought up in the house of the Lord. Amen. amen. Because only God can bless her. I have no blessings. Amen. God owns all the blessings. But we can dedicate her unto the Lord. Amen. And most importantly of all, that we have dedicated support. Amen. Both spiritually and naturally so. Amen. They, Shanti and Yang, up for the task. Guess what? You ain't got no choice. <laughs> Amen. Baby is here. So we just want the blessings of God. And guess what? I also have a part in this. I have to preach to you. I have to give you the unadulterated word of God. Yes. Sometimes it's going to hurt. Amen. The rod, it comforts. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. But it's also going to hit you too. Yes. If you get out of line. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Yeah. Amen. Because I love the both of you. <laughs> Amen. And I want what's right for both of you and for that child. And as your pastor, I have an obligation to fulfill before all my God. And guess what? I'm not going to come short and give you all Lord, I dedicate, Lord, this day, 
this child, this life, Lord, that you have blessed, oh God, Shantina and me. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we commit, we commit her unto your hands, oh God. That, Lord, that you will place, oh God, your blessings, your anointing. Yes, oh God, Lord. that you would validate her, Lord. Yes. I pray right now, oh God, that you would put a hedge of protection upon her. Yes. Lord, as we lift her up and dedicate her, Lord, unto you. That she would grow up, oh God, learning your ways, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Of your word. Lord, and I pray that you would utilize her, oh God, for your glory. Thank you. Lord, we thank you, oh God. There is a reason why, God, she is called the only Lord today. And Father, it is only because of you, Lord, that she has life and blood in yes. her life. Father, we thank you for the work oh God, thank that you. you have placed, Lord, over her life and the things that you are going to do within her. Yes. Lord, we pray and we ask right now that, Lord, that you would bless her. Yes. Lord, Lord, as we dedicate her. And as we dedicate her, Lord, Lord, we pray that you would touch her parents. Thank as well. you, Lord. Yes. Lord, and and yes. And touch their eyes and their thank eyes. You, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Lord, we pray, oh God, that for their support. We pray, oh God, you, Lord, that you would touch their finances. Yes. Give them the wisdom, the understanding, oh God. Yes. Lord, to raise this child in the fear and in your admonition. Yes. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we pray that you would touch, Lord, the God. Thank you. Touch, oh God, the yes. grandparents, the great grandparents, Lord, the niece, the uncles, and the auntie, Lord, and all the family, Lord, and this church, oh God, that will play a significant part, Lord, in her spiritual upbringing and in her development. Thank you. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you all honor and praise. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. let everyone say amen. 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 Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yes. 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 Amen. That God is faithful. Yeah. As we dismiss, we want to thank everyone, all of our visitors, those that are streaming in. God bless you. We love you. We have to find the Lord today for you. All of our visitors and our guests, thank you yes. so much. Amen. For coming out this morning. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bring somebody. Amen.